Greetings to everyone on the channel History in 3D. I continue a series of video tours of the virtual ancient Rome, recreated in 3D. This is my first attempt at making a video with voiceover, so any feedback would be greatly appreciated. So let's get started. Today we will talk about the Altar of Peace, which I believe can be especially symbolic in the time that we are now living. This altar is one of the most famous and outstanding monuments of ancient Rome, and it was intended to serve as a symbol of the coming era of peace and prosperity, which was to come under Augustus after a long period of exhausting external and civil wars. The altar was erected in the northern part of the Campus Martius and served as one of the elements of a large-scale complex which included such monuments as the Mausoleum of Augustus and the Obelisk, the so-called Solarium of Augustus. In this era, this part of the Campus Martius was not yet densely built up and served as a place for recreation and walks of the people of Rome. The altar was decreed by the Senate on the 4th of July 13 BC and was dedicated on the 30th of January 9 BC. The altar stood just west of Via Water. Today it is Via del Corso, near the Horologium Solare Augusti. The altar is shown on coins of Nero, but is not mentioned elsewhere in literature or inscriptions. The remains have been found under Palazzo Fiano, at the corner of Via del Corso and Via in Lucino. Fragments began to come since 16th century, and about 120 years ago, systematic excavations have started. The altar was carefully studied and reconstructed. It has been reassembled on a new place near the Mausoleum Augusti. The altar stood on almost square platform. The entrance was from the west side. The platform was bounded by a high screen wall with broad axial doors. The screen was embellished with sculptures inside and out. The outer screen is divided into two zones horizontally, inside and out, and divided into panels by Corinthian pilasters at the corners and doorways. On the exterior, the lower zone is filled with rich scrolls of acanthus, peopled with small animals and birds. Above this, on the east and west ends, there are allegorical panels flanking the doorways. Let's look at the panels on the east side. The left panel is the most complete, but its identification is still not clear. The goddess in the middle is usually identified as Pax Otelus, surrounded by wind and sea winds. The whole scene is a mention of prosperity and abundance. Only small fragments of the right panel survive, suggesting that the panel depicts a seated goddess, most likely Roma. She sits on a throne of trophies, and similar reliefs suggest that she was surrounded by the genius figures of the Senate and the Roman people. Let's move to the west side. The left panel survives in poor remains, representing the Lupical scene where we see Faustus discovering the twins Romulus and Remus. The figure on the left is usually identified as Mars.
And finally, the right panel. This one is in relatively good condition, but its identification is doubtful as well. Most common opinion that it represents Aeneas sacrificing the white soul to the Penates, the alternative vision that the central figure is Numa Pompilius. Now let's take a look at the side procession reliefs. South procession. First we can see a group of priests. Then comes a group in which Augustus appears, surrounded by lictors, followed by the Flamians, accompanied by Camille with sacrificial implements. There then follows a large company of men, women and children, the usual interpretation that they are members of imperial family. North procession. From the left side there are a group in which women and children are prominent. Presumably they are the members of the imperial family as well, including Julia the Elder and Octavia the Younger, daughter and sister of Augustus. Then we see procession is made up of men wearing a toga accompanied by Camille with various sacrificial implements. Looks like the procession represents some of the major priesthoods of Rome, the Septimviri, Augurs and Quindecimviri. The altar itself nearly fills the interior. It was decorated by the frieze which shows Sovet Aurelia sacrifice in procession and the Vestal Virgins with the Pontifex Maximus. The frieze is flanked with winged lions. Presumably the altar frieze showed the annual sacrifice in idealized form. On the interior side the wall was decorated with rich garlands of fruit and leaves swung in the loops between Bukrania, to the horns of which they are attached by fluttering ribbons. The loops made by the garlands are filled with patera, which float free. In late antiquity, the view around the altar became completely different. In the time of Hadrian, the ground level in this part of Campus Martius was raised, and the new level was near the top of the wall frieze of altar screen. Thereafter, the altar stood in a well. The space was densely built up. Thank you for watching. Please follow our channel and project and support it if you want. All links are in the description under this video. Stay with us and we'll bring history to life together.